Hey guys, welcome back. So this time, even though I kinda had no choice because Apple only released the 14 inch MacBook, I decided to grab the new MacBook M5 14 inches. I went with the base model again, 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Yes, you heard that right. I actually downgraded from 24 gigabytes on my MacBook Pro 16 inches M4, and now I'm back to 16 gigabytes. We'll see how that goes. For the color, I went back to space black, simply because I love it and this year pretty much all my devices, my Apple Watch, everything except my iPhone are black. I'm really into the darker look for my gear right now. And about Apple removing the power adapter to lower the price. I don't know if this strategy makes sense or not, I'm really curious to hear what you think about that move. I know I'm probably losing a bit of performance, maybe except for the new CPU, but honestly the 14 inch MacBook is exactly what I want to carry around. For moving around, traveling, working in cafes, it's perfect. The 16 inch was amazing, but man, it was heavy. My shoulders still remember it. And I swear every time I pull this thing out of the box, it smells new, it's so satisfying. Now, if you're someone who works without an external monitor, I actually don't recommend the 14 inch, it's small, especially if, like me, you need a bigger screen for IDEs, graphs, video editing, basically anything that needs lots of screen real estate. But if you're buying it mainly for traveling, or if you're always carrying your laptop in a backpack, then the 14 inch model is honestly a great deal. Now before saying goodbye to my 16 inch MacBook Pro M4, I want to run a couple of quick tests, nothing super in depth, just a few comparisons with the new MacBook Pro M5. So first, let's install Max Fan Control to at least monitor how the fans behave. I love that tool. The 14 inch MacBook Pro M5 has only one fan, so of course it spins up more often compared to the 16 inch model, which has better ventilation and a more capable cooling system. But honestly, we already kind of expect that. Okay, a few tests will follow, but let's also focus on setting up my development environment, shall we? All right, first of all, let's install a tool to manage my different Java JDK versions. And for that, I'm using SDK Man. Before that, I used to get myself a headache install manually every JDK from Oracle. And of course, to install anything, we are going to be using the terminal. But before we even open the default terminal, which to be honest, it sucks, let's install one of the best terminal apps out there, Warp. And you know, while leaving tools in their default state, no way. We customize everything, so the first thing we are doing is changing the theme. SDK Man has a really nice way to list, manage and install different JDKs. It actually reminds me a lot of Node Version Manager. Same concept, same convenience. My only concern was figuring out where each JDK gets installed, so I could export the right Java home path for my IDE later. But SDK Man handles that pretty cleanly once you know where to look. Now, if we're going to start coding and building projects in IntelliJ with a JDK, we obviously need a build tool. And I'm skipping the whole part where I install Homebrew. You've all seen that a million times in every Apple Silicon setup video. So with Brew, I install Maven, which I use to build my Java applications, but I'm not leaving it with the default configuration. I want to override the settings XML in my Maven config so I can point it to my own self-hosted Nexus repository. That way Maven fetches dependencies from my mirror. Everything builds a lot faster and it's super handy when creating images of my apps. I wanted to run a quick Cinebench single core test because I was really curious to see who wins, so I launched the single core benchmark on both machines at the same time, the old MacBook Pro M4 with its 14 CPU cores and the new M5 with 10 cores. And surprisingly the MacBook M5 finished first. 
I wrapped up the test a few seconds earlier and scored noticeably higher. Then the M4 eventually finished with a lower score. So yeah, single core performance on the M5 is no joke. Now I'm honestly curious to run a multi-core test just for fun and see how they compare there. Okay, moving on, let's also install NVM, the node version manager. I like having it ready in case I need to build or test some older node projects and make sure everything compiles correctly. Next, I tried running and building a simple Java Spring project, starting from the lightest one and moving toward a bigger code base. Even though a few integration tests were failing, at least the test container setup and database interactions were working, so I could run the full build just to compare speeds. Then I found a project on GitHub called the Pet Clinic, maintained by someone from the Spring community. It includes some heavier tests, so it's perfect for benchmarking longer, more demanding builds. And the result, same story, the MacBook M5 finished a few seconds earlier than the M4. I also tried a Node.js project, and again, same outcome. The M5 wins by maybe a second or so, thanks to its new CPU, nothing dramatic, but still consistently faster. And speaking of performance, maybe it's time to install some monitoring tools at least to keep an eye on resources and temperatures. A few months ago I found this project on GitHub called Neo HTOP. It's basically a supercharged version of the default system monitor, with a nice UI. I use it a lot to track CPU and memory usage, and I can even kill processes if needed. Then I remembered I had purchased a while back iStat menus, it's a tool that monitors basically every hardware component you could want. Super handy for getting a full overview. Just a heads up though, if you enable everything, your top menu bar will be full of icons. But hey, I'd like seeing all the stats at a glance. Next up, I installed one of my favorite code editors or IDs, aside from IntelliJ, of course, called Try. Lately, it's been gaining a lot of popularity, and honestly, I can see why. At first glance, it might seem just like another VS Code fork, but it actually has some unique features that set it apart from other IDs. One of the coolest things is the AI Agent Builder. With it, you can literally improve your code base based on contextual analysis. It can suggest changes, refactor code, or even help you optimize your project structure. On top of that, you can configure your own MCP server if you want to run everything locally, which is great for testing projects in a sandboxed environment. For me, having an ID that combines coding, AI-assisted suggestions, and local server management is a real game changer, especially when working on larger projects. I also installed some of my favorite password managers. One is Bitwarden, which I run on my own server, and the other is very similar Strongbox. I actually use both of them, depending on the situation. Once I got comfortable, I decided it was time to finally change this freaking desktop wallpaper. Just something different, you know? And then I set up an app I use all the time and actually own a license for, Lunar. This tool makes my life way easier because it talks directly to your monitors and controls brightness, and not just in a basic way. You can automate it by time of day, sync it with an external monitor, or even use sensors to adjust automatically. And if you need the privacy, you can black out your screen without shutting it down or locking it. Super handy when you're switching environments or just want to focus without distractions. Finally, a couple of apps I want to show you are Zen Browser and MindNode. I discovered Zen Browser a few weeks ago and I really love it. The UI is super clean, really focused on simplicity and Zen mode, which makes browsing a lot more relaxing. And MindNode is an amazing productivity app for creating mind maps. It lets you visualize ideas as nodes and paths, which is perfect for brainstorming, whether you're working alone or collaborating with team on projects. And with that, guys, I just want to say goodbye and thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate your being here and remember, keep on coding.